we're going to cover why bother with iManage Cloud and AI readiness. We're going to talk about understanding the key steps on your iManage Cloud journey with an eye toward leveraging AI. Our first topic of today with this esteemed panel is, is out of the gate is why bother? Why even do this? Why even take document management to the cloud? Sort of what's, what's the compelling reason? So David, I think I'll throw that one over to you. Yeah, since sure. you guided several firms in their DM journey. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look outside of our industry, there's been a fundamental shift to the cloud that's been going on for a long time. Um, and recently, um, legal has really picked up on that and began the journey themselves. Um, I think, you know, we're seeing things from vendors telling us that that's going to be the only platform that are going to support going forward. Some that are actually delivering on that promise. Um, and certainly that's where uh, I think most of the innovation is taking place. Um, so, you know, for example, we don't see AI innovation popping up behind on-premise systems. Uh, we see AI innovation behind nearly every cloud-based uh, application. So, you know, to me, um, coupled with the fact that we're seeing our clients making the shift as well, and I think the view that, um, you know, it's 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 a place of danger is is kind of outdated right now. I'm so glad you said that because one of the the things I'm excited about for the the folks listening to this webinar is myth busting because there is a lot of myths out there as it relates to taking applications to the cloud. David, do you want to, to elaborate on that, that the, the myth that the cloud is dangerous? Yeah, I think early days, it was a question of client trust. Um, so, you know, we when we began the security journey in, in our industry, it was on the uh, remarks, I, I believe, of some, some people in Congress that said, you know, law firms are the soft underbelly of the client. And um, I think we've seen nice. a, a considerable response from... Uh, from the legal community uh, in terms of uh, taking steps to build confidence with our clients that you know we take security seriously and that we do it right. But there's no doubt that there's a, a shift in skill sets for engineers. I think some engineers make that transition quite easily. Um, I think others, you know, it, it, it's going to take some work um, and some training. But you know, in that process, there there can be risks that creep up. <clears throat> Certainly, we want to protect cloud just as we would protect our on-premises environment. But um, each each have their own unique challenges, and we just have to make sure that we address them appropriately. Mm -hmm. How about the the myth that the cloud is expensive? And is that actually a myth? Um, I think it's a mixed bag. Like generally, I feel you know if if you look at your your whole portfolio, I I see it as somewhat net neutral. But you know you could migrate to Zoom UCAS for a, a reduction in costs or you could go to Cisco for an increase in costs. So I think application to application, it's different. Um, certainly storage costs and indexing play a factor in that. So there's some technical reasons why it can be more costly. And that's that's why we're gonna talk about other things like information governance, mm -hmm. et cetera. But you know, it's, it's certainly a moment where you need to get your house in order, you need to assess things carefully. Um, and then, you know, I, I think generally, I, I'm, I'm just talking about SaaS based applications right now, but you know, if you're going to look to foray into Azure, for example, and infrastructure as a service, then there's a whole new um, set of expenses that you need to manage. Anything from bandwidth to compute to memory to number of virtual machines. So it's important that you're on your game um, and, and on also aware of how to manage those costs or partner with the right firm that can help you uh, keep a bird's eye view uh, of those costs. So, you know, I think generally, while I say net neutral, there, there are certainly scenarios where costs can escalate and escalate quickly. E-discovery uh, from a storage-based perspective, future caseloads, um, things like that. So you just have to be prepared for it. And then I think you have to um, talk to your business about that. Um, your finance team is probably already going to see a shift in OpEx uh, away from CapEx. So um, again, it's just that, you know, it's a different way of, of your firm uh, viewing these costs as well that you need to partner with finance on. Thank you for that. Um, and I'm sure that uh, guidance is quite valuable and, and we are going to talk about some of the ways to mitigate some of the expenses. Uh, recognizing that that um, there is different types of expenses and and working to to mitigate that and the strategies that you put in place there. Um, what about the myth that it's difficult to search in iManage? 
Um, you know, I think it's probably a myth that prevails on premises or in the cloud. Um, but you know, I, I think feedback like that from your business is important to hear and take on. Um, I think it's also important to know that, you know, probably platform to platform, net docs, et cetera, you'll hear the same complaints. So I think it's, um, while it seems painful and granular, um, at the same time, I think there's a lesson in uh, human behavior there. Why do some firms love it? Why do some firms hate it? So, you know, clearly there are solvable problems in that mix. Um, mm -hmm. I just think it's important that you do the due diligence, you talk to your stakeholders, you make them feel heard. And then um, when you make these changes, um, anytime you make a big application shift, that's absolutely an opportunity for you to get your house in order, maybe solve some of those problems, mm -hmm. do more practice group engagement. Um, and then of course, you know, your partner, I, I think is really key. So who you work with mm -hmm. to, to achieve that shift um, can be a big factor in uh, the function of the application. Mm-hmm. And David, let's not forget, you know, training and educating users about what's possible and the best practices and the best tips and tricks for how to search for and locate documents. I mean, it's funny, you, you made the mention, some firms don't have a problem with searching, others do. You'll find core groups of teams, practice teams in a firm that love it, can find what they're looking for just fine. And other group across the, or down the hall in the firm has a real struggle. So really kind of understanding what their pain points are, teaching them to how to how to leverage the search capabilities. Um, it's it's not as bad as people may think it out to be or make it out to be, but um, just continuing to educate and help people understand what's possible, I think is key, so. Absolutely, I mean, sometimes one practice group having a great search experience may, means that they manage their knowledge better than another practice group. So when they're searching for knowledge, it's a more targeted search. Um, I also think there's the Google effect. So, you know, some people can find things on Google and, and get results. Other people can't. And and what's the difference? It's I think it's learning the search a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of human issues. I just think, you know, you, you need to do the due diligence to understand it and address it on a case by case basis. And I like the way you said that there's solvable problems in, in there in in the, the perception around the search issue. What about the, the myth that moving to the cloud is a long and arduous process? I mean, it, I think it's it's like any other application shift. So, um, but one factor that can contribute to that is large transfers of data. Um, mm -hmm. So I've seen that, that's probably the sing, singular thing that I've seen slow down projects. You can't predict the internet. You can't send a hard drive to the cloud person and have them stick it in uh, their, right. <laughs> their, uh, their back end and download all your data. Um, although I think that would be a great idea. Um, but uh, and, and I've always heard that there's opportunities for that. And the next thing you know, there's, there's no opportunity for that. Why? I, I don't understand. But, uh, you know, that's probably the biggest shift. Um, but, you know, there is also this, like, again, the shift from... Uh, uh, how you manage applications on premises and API intensive uh, uh, cl cloud factor. Um, so it's a shift in in how you accomplish that. So your application team needs to partner with the right people. Mm -hmm. Although I've generally found, you know, in the API world, some seasoned uh, veteran developers seem to have a, a great view of that. So sometimes it could be a different a difference between the tenure of your engineers and yeah. um, and whatnot. <laughs> 